Hey, Ashmore All Things Industry, the place where passion will sharing those unwritten hints and tips in industry. Well, I had a question from Huma asking literally about the balance force technique and preparing canals, like say for example, distal mandibular canal, with files, hand files, larger than because the ProTaper F5 wasn't large enough. Let's go ahead and take a look what he's talking about. So this article here, which is free at endoexperience.com, it's a great little review talking about what the balance force technique is if you really want to get into it uh, I suggest you take a look at it uh, link is in the description box below okay so let's go ahead and talk about a few a few topics just about you know the balance force technique but what is it used for and how is it used so that article if you read it is really it's a great article and the balance force technique was really used for when you had um, even 25 size let's see here we've got a bunch of files they're all nickel titanium but for example you had a curve like this and in 1995 nickel titanium files were not available i don't even know if they were created i have to check uh, you got curves like this and all you had were stainless steel stiff as a board hand files so Jim Rohn, Dr. Rohn created the balance force technique, which is essentially you're going to screw in the file a little bit. So a quarter turn, let's get, my, get this, the indicator here. You're going to turn the file in a little bit, engage some dentin, and then place apical pressure. I'm pushing the file apically or this way to the left. And then I'm going to do a almost a full turn. You can do a full turn. It doesn't really matter. Really, the idea is to break dentin. So what that does is it balances the force in terms of you're still cutting. I'm cutting dentin on my on my the quarter turn rotor quarter turn in, and then I'm I'm engaging dentin and I'm breaking it as I spin the file. So that's really what the intent of the the of the uh, of the balance force technique was was for curved canals with stainless steel files. Nickel titanium rotary files came out, um, and we've kind of gone away from that. But let's talk about this case here where like Hamas said, and I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, and I'm just gonna do it with my iPhone versus using a microscope and we'll see how it goes. So here are some extracted teeth that we've mounted them there for, for a course I've posted online. It's at allthingsendo.ca. So of all the tips that I've have helped me through the years, go ahead and take a look and you know, go ahead and check that out. Try to make it as affordable as possible. I know you didn't wake up and be like, oh, I wanna do an endo course today, but maybe today is a new day and you want to. So allthingsendo.ca and you go through all the tips that uh, I've been taught. So say for example, in this case, this is a four canal mandibular molar that we did. And we endo size root canal. And what happens is, and the reason why it's in this is because I've mounted in um, alginate so I can use my apex locator. So you're gonna learn how to do that too on the course. So, you know, for example, you've got a large lesion that resorbs some of the, uh, that root or the canal is just super large and you want to make sure so this is really the idea is you want to make sure that you're getting adequate debridement we want to make sure that we're getting success and i think that's the biggest thing i need to bring home is you want success you don't want the patient to come back with problems so we're going to open this up and machine the inside of our canal but the problem is is that when we go to our working length say for example we went to a working length the the canal is so big the apical portion is so big that you might not getting adequate debridement machining of that of the internal aspect of that tooth so some people what you can do is you can actually run your file you can kind of gauge it and run your file long a bit and see you could do this by hand using the balance force technique or you can run it long whatever you want and what you do is you'd run it a little bit say a millimeter long definitely a, a I'm not really an advocate of this, but I'm just giving you some, some tips what some people can do and, and it may work for them. You can run the file long and then as you pull it out, you can check to see where the debris is cutting and then you would say, well, now I've machined the inside of my tooth. Now the problem with that is that obviously you're um, taking the file into the PDL or your, you know, your lesion of endodontic origin area so that's one problem the other one that may be problematic is for increasing the size and it's hard to control it unless you're a super expert of which i am not so to keep things safe i can't even get this back in <laughs> well, there's like, there we go so that's one way to do it uh you would and you know at the same time as we're talking about this if you're having a problem i'm going to talk about really quick working length issues with your apex locator if you're using a 1015 file and you're trying to get your apex you're getting your um, apex location, you know, with the 25, what you're going to, what the problem is, is that the, you know, this portion of the canal is so big, look at this, a 25 that went out 
Look how far it went out before I got any type of engagement. If you're using a 10 file and trying to get your working length and it gets really, you know, the, the gauge, the meter's going like, and you're almost pulling your hair out, increase your file size to a point where you get a solid reading. You may have to dry your canal a bit, but definitely, like, I mean, look how loosey-goosey that is. So that will help you by increasing your file size. You may have to go up to a 35, 40 to get a proper reading. So using the balance force technique in cases like this, you don't even need to, but we recommend it because it's easy to cut denting. You'll see you in a sec. Um, so the balance force technique we we're talking about was for stainless steel files. So you can still use stainless steel files. They're pretty stiff, but if you've never used nickel titanium hand files, man, they are amazing. You can see the difference on uh, the indicator. So this indicates the cross-sectional diameter of the file, which is a square in K files. And then it's a black for K file and nickel titanium is typically, um, half black, half white. This is, and look at the flexibility. So here's, this is a 50 in the stainless steel. This is a 50 in nickel titanium. It's just incredible it maintains its shape and it's really effective to do that i find using the balance force technique to go around slight curvatures which this is designed now you can also do your balance force technique with your with your rotary file as well uh, i'll do that if i've got a not so much a 50 but if i've got a curve that i'm not feeling comfortable trying to get around with my uh, nickel titanium files i'll just with my rotary files i'll use the balance force technique that's extremely rare but it may happen so let's go ahead and see how the balance force technique works. Uh, I'm gonna tackle this straight with a, with a 25 file and I'll show you if I can do it. You know, usually you get your glide path and you're gonna go, you know, 10, 15, 20. Let's tackle it just with a 25 nickel titanium file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quarter turn. Let's get it so we can see here. We're gonna do a quarter turn in so it screws in and then I'm gonna do a, almost a full turn, 180. It doesn't really matter. I'm pushing apically, so I'm pushing pressure this way. You'll hear a click and then we're going to do another. So what happened was I just got, that's one, one rotation or one, one cutting cycle. I'm going to do another. So quarter turn in, you can see the file decreases and then I'm going to do another 180 or full circle apically in the counterclockwise. You'll hear it cut. We'll pull it out and you can see the debris on the file. Pretty cool, eh? So that's the nickel, that's the uh, balance force technique. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. So you can see how that file is going around the, going around the curve. I'm not hand filing. I'm not doing any up and down. I'm not doing, you know, watch winding. I'm literally doing a balance force technique. So it's the quarter turn in and a full turn um, reverse counter counterclockwise with apical pressure. Now, the thing is, is like, if you, if you do this, if you quarter turn in and your file comes back out, that means that you're not placing enough apical pressure, okay? So let's do one more cutting cycle. You'll hear the clicks. There's cutting and more debris on my file. And you can see that there. Now in that article, it talks about why is, um, you know, what are some of the clicks? Well, most of the time, if you're doing it properly, if the clicking is a cutting of dentin, one is a snap. Another option, another reason why you're getting clicks is you know your the gloves are snapping, and the other one is you just broke a file. <laughs> so let's just go with a 30, and we'll do the same thing again. Quarter turn in, clockwise turn, apical pressure. Quarter turn in. There we go, and you can see the debris again. Let's go to a, what was that? Let's go to 35, same thing. So I'll do three cutting cycles and then I'll have to, you gotta clean your files, clean the flutes. Obviously you're gonna be irrigating. I don't have any irrigating syringe with me. And there's more debris. So that is one way to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, this situation here. So that's our apical, that's our, you know, going around curves. Let's talk about using it in kind of a real life situation. So, so, so this is Pro Taper Next. It's a 5006. You can see the 5006 right there. So 5006, this is. So in the, so this is the size of the tip. If you're not familiar with that, this is the size of the tip, and then this 
is the taper of the apical three millimeters. So I know that uh, at, the, at the first millimeter, it's a six degree taper. So if we got our file here, this is a 50 file. One millimeter back is 56. Two millimeters back is uh, 62. Three millimeters back is 68. Oh gosh, I've been doing French grade four because we're homeschooling. Uh, <laughs> 68, correct. Okay, so 68. So we know that three mils back is roughly a 68. So the reason why I'm doing that is just to kind of give you an idea of how I calculate, um, even with these rotary files, your apical prep. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'm gonna whip through this. All right, so let's go ahead and get our working leg. And we're gonna see, we've got our 55 file, K file. Now, anything over, typically over, uh, they don't really make nickel titanium hand files over um, a 50. So when we hit the 55 mark, and you're gonna need like a 55, 60, 70, 80, if you're gonna be doing cases like this, it's just, you gotta have them floating around, you can't kind of wing it. So let's go ahead and get our working length. You can see where that 55 just slides right through. So we get our working length with our apex locator using a large hand file like this. <clears throat> and then let's place it right there. We're gonna estimate it and just, we can see the file right coming out. Let's meet it right about there. And let's just measure it. So for say for example, our apex locator would read uh, 17 and a half. Let's cut this to say 17. Let's do that for this case here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our, I'm gonna skip right to a 70, just to speed this up. So, oh gosh, I forgot what it's. Okay, let's do this to a 17. All right, so let's set our working length to 17. I'm doing that, um, so it'd be one red bar minus 17, subtracting. About there. So this, you can see, is pretty stiff. So you gotta be careful in doing these types of cases. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do our balance force technique. So it's gonna be a quarter turn in, and then apical pressure and down. These larger files you typically don't hear much. So I'm doing my apical preparation right now. I'll do three cycles and then let's take a look. And sometimes you get debris on these large, the size of these, of these flutes. So I get some debris, sometimes I don't. So what I'm gonna do at the same time, so we're gonna do it one more cycle, see if we can get, you're gonna be irrigating the whole time. Lots of irrigation. And just a tiny little debris. So as I'm making my way apically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly do some filing. So I'm gonna do some um, coronal, f I'm gonna pull back, I'm gonna get slowly to my working length, I'm gonna file coronally. So well, you can also use a balance, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do this. You can do balance force technique in, and then pull. And then what I'm trying to do is we're trying to debride the, the biofilm on the entire portion of that canal. Now the thing is, just be careful around the the inner aspect of those roots because sometimes you, these are really aggressive so you can strip perf, you don't wanna do that. But what we're doing is we're just doing a light filing. It does not be really hard. We're just trying to get rid of that debris. Uh, debris, biofilm, even vital tissue if it's vital and just debride that. And remember a large, a significant part of what we're trying to do is create the chemomechanical, trying to create room for irrigants to get down there or just to disrupt the biofilm. Now, do you need to go to this size for this type of case? Well, it depends on your philosophy. Sometimes if you're gonna place intracanal medicament for a couple weeks or a month, you may not decide to go to this size. Okay, so make sure that we have a positive apical stop or apical pressure preparation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place, I'm gonna take my, my file and then we're gonna place it to our working length and we're gonna place it apically. So you can see here, I don't know if I move that. Let's see, and that's the problem sometimes, I gotta check. So we are at, yeah, we moved it a bit. So that's why, there we go. So let's just check, make sure we're good. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna place apical pressure and see if it moves and it's moved just a quarter, which I'm okay with. Let's take a look here. Looks like we're good. So what I would say is now we, we've created kind of an apical preparation. We've removed, we've debrided and removed as much biofilm as possible. So. That in a nutshell is kind of the situation, you know, what I recommend or what I've been doing for many years in terms of preparing large 
apical por portions, large canals, when you don't, uh, you know, when you, you run out of rotary files. Anyways, I hope that helps. Don't forget to like, sub, subscribe, send it to your friends, and uh, check us out on uh, allthingsendo.ca. Talk to you soon. Cheers.